Would you know what to do if you were stranded outdoors in winter? Survival knowledge could save your life. Would you recognize a survival situation and act while you still have the energy? This trucker should have provided himself with fire and shelter immediately. A delay may be fatal. Should you try to walk out? In winter, the odds are against you. You're better off close to your vehicle and your gear. So travel only a short distance to improve your situation. On this one over here, my left one. In any survival situation, priority must be given to first aid. Use hand pressure to stop any bleeding. Cover the wound with a clean cloth or bandage. Don't remove blood soaked dressings. Just put additional ones on top. Always treat an accident victim for shock. To treat shock, lay the victim down on an insulating layer and keep her warm. Raise the wounded limb to slow blood flow to the wound and immobilize it. Remember to reassure her constantly. Above all, beware of the main winter killer. Hypothermia. Hypothermia is the cooling of the brain and vital organs. First, you start shivering. Then you lose your coordination and feel confused. As your brain cools, you lose the ability to act sensibly. Shivering stops as severe hypothermia sets in. Before long, you lapse into unconsciousness. There is only one way to prevent hypothermia. Keep warm and dry. Be on the lookout for frostbite because there's no pain to warn you. Cover any white patches of skin with your hand and warm them gently with body heat. Warm up cold fingers under your arm. Carefully look at your feet every day and treat patches of frostbite before serious damage occurs. Don't rub or apply snow or you'll increase the tissue damage. It's worth taking a good first aid course. You could save a life. In winter, fire is your most important survival tool. First, dig down to solid ground, then gather your fuel. For tinder, Use fuzz from your clothing or other dry flammable material such as cattails. For kindling, gather dead evergreen twigs. Or you can make a feather stick. Standing deadwood makes the best firewood. Of course you'll need matches, dry matches, so always carry some in a waterproof case. Light your tinder from upwind 
and shield your flame. Then add kindling, but don't smother your fire. It needs oxygen. Don't waste energy chopping firewood. Just put the whole log on the fire and let it burn through. Fire is your greatest friend in a winter emergency. Know how to use it. These skiers won't be stranded in the bush for long. Hey, listen. Help arrived, but only because they told a responsible person to come looking for them if they failed to return on time. These snowmobilers have told no one about their travel plans, so they now face at least one unplanned night in the bush. They'll need a shelter. A lean-to is the ideal shelter, because it can easily be built by anyone without using an axe or saw. Choose a flat place between two trees. The steeper the roof angle, the better it will shed water and reflect heat. Evergreen boughs go butt end up and overlap like shingles. The roof should be at least 15 centimeters thick. In winter, evergreen boughs are brittle and break off easily, so you can gather them without using an axe. Cover the floor with a layer of boughs to insulate your body from the cold ground. In a wooded area, a lean-to is the best survival shelter you can make. It's the only shelter that allows you to take advantage of a warm fire. Build your fire the length of the lean-to and about a meter in front. If the front of the shelter is parallel to the wind, smoke won't be drawn into the lean-to. Now you should make yourself plainly visible from the air so rescuers can find you. You must build a special signal fire so that you can produce a lot of smoke in a hurry. First, build a raised platform for your fire with two dead trees. Clear away the snow so that air can feed the fire from below. Now make a framework of four green saplings. Build up a chimney using at least 20 feather sticks and fill it with kindling. Cover the framework with green boughs, butt end up. Finally, top it with a cap to shed snow and water to keep the kindling dry. Smoke from three signal fires like this, 30 meters apart, is a recognized distress signal. Now use evergreen branches to make an X at least 15 meters long on a lake or in another open space. Branches create maximum contrast. Signs stamped out in the snow are not sufficiently visible from the air, especially on an overcast day. 
A heliograph mirror is responsible for more rescues than any other common signaling device. Always carry one and learn how to use it. To alert a ground search party, use three loud sounds. Now what about food and water? You'll need plenty of fluids or you'll feel tired and ill. But never take alcohol. It impairs judgment and you'll need a clear head to survive. Heat your water. Eating snow or drinking ice water uses up body heat. Add a bit of flavoring to make warm water taste better. You can survive without food for many days, but you'll feel a lot better if you have an emergency supply of candy or some other high calorie snacks. Ration your food carefully. It may have to last a long time. Don't go hunting. You probably won't see or catch a thing, but you will use up precious energy and you may get lost. Brass wire is more useful than a gun. Use it to make rabbit snares. Look for a well-used rabbit trail through thick bushes and shape a loop about 10 centimeters across. Set it about seven centimeters off the ground. Channel the rabbit into your snare with dead sticks, not green twigs, or rabbits will chew them up. If you do catch wild meat, cook it well so you don't get sick. Boiling it will give you soup as well as meat. Now you have only one enemy left to deal with, yourself. Boredom and loneliness can torment you. So keep yourself occupied in any way that doesn't waste energy. But remember that cold and lack of food make you clumsy. So don't take chances. Keeping busy will help pass the time until help arrives. By now you must be aware that even a small survival kit can make the difference between life and death. Here's the minimum you should carry. A container that can double as a pot. Put in a small first aid manual, a heliograph mirror, a field dressing, candy or a high calorie snack, a small file, one or two freeze-dried rations, a space blanket, three meters of good cord, parachute cord is ideal, a good pocket knife, a mini flare for signaling at night, a whistle, 
a flint and steel, brass wire, dry matches, pins, needles, and hooks, soup cubes, and salt. Now seal it up and don't use it except in an emergency. Always take it with you into the bush. In any vehicle, you should carry snowshoes, a sleeping bag, a shovel, and an axe. And always carry extra warm clothes as part of your regular gear. Learn to use a compass with a map so you don't get lost. Being prepared is the key to winter survival. So always carry an emergency kit and proper gear with you. Practice survival techniques so you won't panic when you're caught in a real survival situation. Always tell a responsible person where you are going and when you plan to return, so that help will arrive if something goes wrong. Don't think it can't happen to you.